So today we're going to talk about the wrapping function in the unit circle. So if you remember back from when we were talking about the unit circle, the unit circle is essentially a circle that follows this equation where x squared plus y squared equals 1, meaning that my radius is 1 and the center is at 0, 0. So if we look at this circle that I have drawn down here, and if we assume that that's a unit circle, let's find a couple things. First of all, let's find the circumference. So if we're talking about the circumference, we're talking about how long would that be if I were to measure literally around the edge. So if I were to take a string, if you will, and wrap it all the way around this. Well, you remember that circumference is the equation 2 pi r. So if my unit circle, which has a radius of 1, means that my circumference would be 2 pi in length. So, let's make sure we understand that. What that is saying is if my radius is 1, so let's just say it's 1 inch for argument's sake. Okay, what this is saying, the 2 pi, that's saying it's 2 pi inches all the way around. Well, what's 2 pi inches? Well, if pi is equal to like 3.14, then this is saying that from, if we were to measure all the way around this thing, literally taking a string and measured all the way around, the measurement would be 6.28 inches long. That's what that's saying. Okay? So if that's true, let's get rid of some of this, clean this up just a little bit. If that is true, then what is half the circumference? So in other words, how long would it be going from here to here? Well, if the entire circumference is 2 pi, that means this would be pi in length. Okay, so in other words, it would be 3.14. If we we're taking that string and measuring it, it would measure to 3.14 lengths, okay? Or, or inches, pardon me. And what about one-fourth of the circumference? So that would be up here. So that would be pi over 2. Okay, because, let's clean this up again. Okay. If the length from here to here is pi and that's halfway, a fourth of the way would be half of pi or pi over 2. So in other words, 3.14 over 2 inches long. Well, <clears throat> as we're talking about the unit circle, we have all these different points that are important to us. Okay, There's all these different spots and... and uh, you know, as we are looking at these things, we have certain ones that we really spend a lot of time on. We have the length from, if we use this as a starting point, the length from there to here. We call that pi over 4. That's pi over 4 lengths. We have this one right here, pi over 6. We have this one, pi over 3. Okay, obviously this is pi over 2 over here. Um, going over here, we have 2 pi over 3. We have 3 pi over 4. We have 5 pi over 6. Here we have pi, etc. And those are all different spots that uh, we talked about in the unit circle video. Okay, well, what we want to talk about today is this thing that's called a wrapping function. See, the thing is, if I look at this circle, and if I were to trace this circle, let's say starting right here, if I were to trace it all the way around and get to this point, and if I keep on going, okay, I'm going to just keep following the same pattern over and over again. Well, the question is, well, what if, if I'm talking about this point right here, let's say pi over 6, what if I don't want to talk about how far it is from here to here, but rather what if I want to talk about how far is it from here all the way around and then to here? What is that length? Well, that length would be, obviously from here to here is pi over 6, and then if I were to go all the way around again, that would be an additional how much? That would be an additional 2 pi in length. So if I wanted to figure that out, I'd have to have pi over 6 plus 2 pi. And if I were to add that up, that would end up being 13 pi over 6. And so what, what we're saying is that pi over 6 and 13 pi over 6 are at the same point on the circle. 
It's just that one, we go from here to here. The other one, we go from here all the way around and then to here. And what if I wanted to know not just what's this length or what's this length, but rather what if I went twice around the circle? So if I went once and then again around, how would I figure out what we would call that point? Well, we would just add another 2 pi. And if we did that, we'd end up with 25 pi over 6. And so the point here is that every point on the unit circle, every point on the unit circle actually has an infinite amount of names to it. It all just depends on what we're talking about. Do we want to just talk about going once or spinning one time around the circle to get there? Or do we want to talk about spinning around the circle several times and then getting there? So it all just depends. So like I said, every one of these points actually has an infinite amount of names to it. In addition, if we take a look, what if down here we have this point 11 pi over 6? Now why do we call it 11 pi over 6? Because if we were to take our string and measure all the way around, it would be 11 pi over 6 units long. But what if instead of going in this direction, what if I wanted to go in this direction? Well, that gets you there a lot quicker. Well, obviously that's not 11 pi over 6 units uh, long. So how do I indicate that I don't want to go this way, but I'd rather go this way? And the way we do that is we use negatives. So in other words, if I wanted to go from here to here in this direction, okay, what I would do is I would call that spot negative, and then pi over 6 units long. Okay, so the negative tells me that instead of going this counterclockwise direction, I'm going to go in a clockwise direction. So, what that means then is not only does every point on this circle have an infinite amount of positive values, like we talked about pi over 6. We could say this is pi over 6, or I could go all the way around, and we can call that 13 pi over 6. Or I could go around again, and I can call that 25 pi over 6. But what it also means is I could also call every point on this circle by a negative name. So instead of this being 11 pi over 6, talking about it going this direction, if I want to talk about it going this direction, I would call it negative pi over 6. And just to add to the excitement of all this, is what if I, not, I didn't want to just go to here, what if I wanted to go all the way around and then to here? Well, how would I figure that out? Well, since getting to this point, I had to add 2 pi to get to here. To go this direction, I would then subtract 2 pi. And so that would then mean that this point right here is also known as negative 13 pi over 6. Okay, so there's a lot of different names. Obviously, an infinite amount of names that every single point on this graph could have. Okay, it all just depends on whether or not we're talking about on the original unit circle, or what if we want to go all the way around. In addition, what if we want to go the other direction? So there's a lot of different, so you need to kind of, you need to be able to keep track of that stuff. Okay, so let's talk about, so this idea, pardon me, of the fact that all these points have an infinite amount of names is what we call a wrapping function. Um, if we take a look, Okay, so let's just pause here for a second. So if we take a look at something like what I have written here, w pi of 4. So w stands for wrapping function of pi over 4. When I'm asking you for the wrapping function of pi over 4, I'm asking you what are the coordinates at pi over 4. So let's, let's do a little imagination here. If I take a look at my unit circle, okay, where's pi over 4 at? Well, pi over 4 is in the first quadrant. It's over here. And so what are the coordinates of pi over 4? Well, this is one of those things that you need to have that unit circle memorized. Remember we said that pi over 4, okay, the coordinates would be root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. And so when I ask you what's the wrapping function of pi over 4, you would just tell me it's root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. 
What about something like pi over 6? Well, if we take a look at that unit circle again, pi over 6 is over here. And so what are the coordinates for that one? Well, it's root 3 over 2, comma, a half. And the last one here that I have, what about pi over 3? Well, pi over 3 is up in that area. Well, the coordinates for that are 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2. Now, I mentioned this in my unit circle video, but it's worth mentioning again. Things that you want to remember, okay, one, is that there's patterns that are involved. Any time that you have something over 4, the coordinates are always going to be root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. Now, whether they are positive or negative all depends on where on the unit circle it is. Anytime you have something over 6, the coordinates are always going to be root 3 over 2, a half. And again, they, we don't know if it's positive or negative. It all just depends on where on the unit circle it is. In addition, running out of room here, if we have something that is something over 3, then the coordinates will always be 1 half root 3 over 2. And again, plus and minus just depend upon where on the circle it is. So if you can keep that part straight, then it actually becomes fairly easy. So let's, let's do a, a couple more challenging type of questions here. Let's, let's work down here. It says on your own, but let's do, do a couple of these together. So if I ask you, what's the wrapping function of 2 pi over 3? Okay, so first thing is, I notice that there's a 3 down there. So right away, I'm just going to start out with 1 half root 3 over 2. And then the next question is, where on the unit circle is 2 pi over 3? I always like to draw little circles like this. And 2 pi over 3, okay, is starting from here, 2 thirds of the way to pi, so that would be over in this coordinate here, or in that qu quadrant, pardon me. So it would be negative 1 half root 3 over 2. Just like that. What about the next one? The next one is negative 5 pi over 6. All right, so before we do anything, let's just start with what are the coordinates. Well, it's a 6 is on the bottom, so I know it's root 3 over 2, a half. Next, let's talk about, let's look at the circle. So it's negative 5 pi over 6, so that means we're going to be going this direction. Well, remember, if it's negative 5 pi over 6, that's going to take us all the way over to right about in this space here. Okay, because remember, whether we're, going, whether we're going in this direction or this direction, okay, this spot right here is going to be pi. Whether it be positive or negative pi, who knows. But if it says 5 pi over 6, that's asking you to travel 5 sixths of the way to pi. So that puts us in that spot right there. So that's the third quadrant, so that means this has to be negative and this has to be negative. Just like that. Alright, let's take a look at the next one. Now the next one is a little tricky. It says 31 pi. Holy crud. 31 pi. Well, let's see. Let's think about the unit circle here before we even put anything in. Now, this is one of those whole pi. So it's either going to be like a 0, 1 or a 1, 0, something like that. So let's take a look at the unit circle. So if I were to travel from here to here, that would be 1 pi. And then if I were to travel, keep going from here to here, that would be 2 pi. 3 pi. 4 pi. So as I keep going, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, what do you notice by all these numbers I'm calling out? 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi. Well, all the odd pi's are here and all the evens are here. So it would be safe to assume then that as I wrap around this a bunch of times, eventually I'm going to get to 31 pi and I'm going to be right here. Well, what are the coordinates right there? Well, that's negative 1, 0. All right, hopefully you're starting to kind of get the idea here. 
So this would be a great idea to hit pause and see if you can do these next two. All right, well, did you figure them out? Well, let's start out with 13 pi over 6. So again, it says 6 on the bottom, so I'm going to start out with 3 over 2, a half. And then the question just becomes, where is that? Well, unit circle, 13 pi over 6. Well, let's see. You know that 13 pi over 6, that's bigger than 2 pi. Okay? So that means we're traveling all the way around. Remember, 11 pi over 6 is right here. 12 pi over 6, so 13 pi over 6 is right there. So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, 12 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6. So we're right there. So my coordinates are root 3 over 2 a half. So 13 pi over 6 is the same thing as if I were to ask this question. What is the wrapping function of pi over 6? Okay, both of those will give me the same answer. What about negative pi, 2 pi over 3 on number 8 here? Well, again, it's a 3 on the bottom, so it's 1 half root 3 over 2. And then where is that? All right, well, negative, so that means we're going to be going this direction. So it's two-thirds of the way, so that means we're over here. So it's negative one-half, negative root three over two. And there you go. Okay, so wrapping functions aren't terribly difficult. You first need to figure out, okay, what are the coordinates going to look like? And then two, where are the positives and negatives? And you got to know where on the unit circle that is. So hopefully that helps.